Oh shit, yeah, I was supposed to do a second part to that tutorial, wasn't I? Oh, I forgot about that. How long has it been? A month? Already? Alright, where's the beer? I'm gonna need it to get through this. <clears throat> okay. I guess I'll show you how to do the rest then. Here we go. So first of all, let's talk about the particles and all the problems I had with them. So it turns out that first of all, you can't have them of different sizes. It just doesn't work. It leads to the particles jumping all over the place for some reason. Now the reason for this is, it's basically kind of like an Alembic where each frame is sort of baked separately. What that means is that there's no consistency between frames as to which particles are which. All we know is where the particles are, not if they're the same particle as the frame before. This is the same reason why you can't reduce the amount of particles there are, which is the second problem I ran into. If you look at my play blast, there are way too many particles and I can't do anything about it. When I pressed render, it took something like 30 minutes just to prepare to render the scene. Not even to render the scene itself. And that's for one frame. What I decided to do instead was to rebake the simulation at 384 samples, rather than 256. That may not seem like a big difference, but it took like four times as long. If you have a desktop CPU, I recommend using it. Laptops aren't great for this. And annoyingly enough, yes, it uses the CPU and not the GPU. Blender, please fix. So now that all the baking was done, it was time to re-edit the door so it looked more like, you know, a door. We didn't need any of the support structures we put in place to direct the flow of the liquid, so we could just delete them all, which is exactly what I did. I also scaled down the door so it was not so much of a thick boy, and tried to line it up as best as I could. Truth is, you really don't need to be accurate with this at all. And in fact, if you look at my final render, the top of the door is a bit too high, but nobody noticed. So next came lighting. I switched to Eevee first of all, just to get a feel for what the lighting would be like. I mean, I know the room pretty well, it is my own hallway, so I tried to match it as best as I could. Of course, it didn't need to be perfect. I decided to fill in the top part using bridge edge loops. It's the easiest way of doing it. I did have to fix some issues with end guns, but it was pretty straightforward. I'm sure you've guessed by now this isn't exactly a tutorial for beginners. In fact, it's not really a tutorial, it's more of a walkthrough. Now, my hallway has a weird landing, so it actually is two stories high. And so I decided to put a light above just to replicates basically ambient light coming from above. Just messing with the light settings, doesn't matter that much. And now of course due to bounce lighting and all that, switching to cycles, everything brightens up. By quite a lot. Once I gave the lights a bit of color, it really started coming alive. So my recording's a bit broken due to drop frames, but I can still explain what's going on. If you have a light that's coming from outside, as in the sun, from a window, you can actually get accurate values for what color the light should be. You do that by going to use nodes on the light and set it to black body. And then you have a color temperature slider. If you know anything about lights, you know that they all have individual color temperatures, and I set mine to 10,000 since it was a cloudy day. Now my hallway has doors with windows in them, which lead out into a second hallway. And the wallpaper on the other side is green. So I decided to color my lights slightly green there, but made them much less powerful because it was only reflected light. However, I didn't want these lights to reflect off the blood. So it was important to go to the object settings and under ray visibility, turn off glossy. Again, there's not much I can do about the footage. It's all going to be a bit crap because Blender and OBS running at the same time is not a good mix. 
I've decided to re-record this part again in real time just to show you because the footage was so bad. And it's literally just this material here. How to get the footage to appear on your model. So what I did is I added a new material and I set the surface to emission. I changed the color to be an image, image texture, but set it to be an image sequence down here. So then I could just select all the images by pressing here and just pressing A and they'd all be selected. Set the amount of frames for the footage, the start frame, make sure auto refresh is turned on so you see it update. And now down here vector is the most important thing. What you want to do is set this to be window. Nice little trick from Ian Hubert, thank you very very much. Now what that does mean is that it will always look like that no matter which angle you look at it from, but from the camera view it looks perfect. And since it has uh, emission turned on, what that also means is the light of the scene will bounce off the blood. As for the door and the fridge, all I did was make them basically holes. And you can do that by going to Object Properties and under visibility there's an option called holdout if you click that it'll just create a giant hole in your footage so next came a lot of messing around and stuff i put the blood back in tested it out with uh, cycles and it looks pretty good i mean the lights working properly which is a good thing need to fix the door it's amazing, this footage is going at 7.5 times speed and you can still see how laggy the footage is. So next came on to the blood material. I added a principal shader and turned the transmission up to 100%. I then made the base color of the material a dark red. And as you can see, it doesn't look great, so I had to mess around with some things. I created a regular RGB node and duplicated it and made them both separate color reds, one darker than the other. I then used a Fresnel node to mix between them and set the value of the index of refraction to be pretty high. And that worked decently well. I think the lighter red color works better in general though, so mess around with it as you wish. And that's pretty much it. All that's left to do now is to blend the video that we have recorded with everything we're going to render out. And we do that by setting up view layers. So in view layers, you should be able to see foreground and background, like so. Now foreground is set up for you, background is not. In the background view layer, there's usually the shadow catcher, which you get from tracking a shot, and it should just be a plane. I deleted this and I duplicated the environment here. Not everything, just the walls. You can do this with the fridge and door as well, up to you. Now normally what you do is you'd make your duplicate and you'd move it to the background layer and then uh, press shadow catcher here and you'd be ready to go. However, we're not going to do that and the reason is the blood is slightly translucent, which means the shadows are going to be colored. They're going to have some red in them. In order to make it as accurate as possible, we want those shadows to be a bit red. But not everywhere, just where the blood is. So instead, go to your materials and add a new, completely perfectly white material. 100%. And also make sure it's in the background layer. Okay, home stretch guys, we're about to finish up now. So the final thing we need to do is add a new view layer and I'm going to call this no shadow. I'll explain why in a second. So I am also going to create a new collection and I'm going to call it blood and we are going to put the blood into that collection. Now in the no shadow layer, I'm going to turn off the blood collection 
as well as the particle collection because it's just not necessary. I'm not going to use it anyways. So then I'm going to select the foreground collection and set the view layer to be set indirect only. In the background layer, I will do the same thing for the blood collection. And in the foreground layer, just leave everything the way it is. It's all good. So finally, when all of this is done, we can move on to compositing. All I'm going to do is duplicate one of the render layer nodes and set it to be the no shadow view layer. And then press F12. So if you go up to the top, you can see that it says combined, but you can switch between all the different view layers. This is the background layer. And this is the no shadow layer. As you can see, they're almost identical, except for the giant shadow, of course. So if you go back to the compositing tab, we're going to add in a mix RGB node and switch it to divide. But why? I, no one uses Divide. Okay, so using the most powerful software ever created, also known as MS Paint, I'm going to demonstrate how all well this works. So if you take any number and divide it by itself, you get one. Okay, five over five is equal to one. 27 over 27 is equal to one. Okay, anything divided by itself is equal to one. Now, if you take black to be zero and white to be one, and of course, if there's any value in between, and you have two pictures that are exactly the same value at any given pixel, then that means will equal just a white picture. I don't think I needed MS Paint for this. Anyway, the point is we're going to have shadows on some parts and some parts where there aren't shadows. And the idea is that anywhere where there isn't shadow is going to be completely white. Anywhere there is shadow, there's going to be a difference. So they cancel each other out basically. There we go. Perfect. And here is the result. Now it's not completely white, as you can see. And the reason for that is there's bounce light off the blood. And so it's only natural that one room would be darker than the other. So I'm going to add in a mix RGB node where the alpha over node used to be and change the modes to multiply. Now make sure to hit this button in order to get your video to show up behind. Otherwise it just... Finally, I plug the mix RGB node into the alpha over node and it should be all good. That's it, that's everything done. Remember to plug the composite node into the end as well. Otherwise, you won't get anything when you render it out. Now you can also use file output nodes in order to render out all three different render layers at once. And this would be very useful if you were to say do all your color correcting for each separate render layer in a different program, such as DaVinci Resolve. You can also use a curves node to mess with your shadow values to get them just the way you want. <sighs> so we finally come to the end. I think I'm going to take a bit of a rest now. You probably won't see me for another three months, but it's all okay. In all seriousness though, I would like to do a couple more videos, and I would like to make it a bit more regular. But, no promises. See you guys soon.